so you, you talk a lot about technical debt and some people some people don't like the model I, I'm, I'm, I'm never quite sure that I understand the arguments against it it seems such a useful concept to me on the whole um, where do you stand is technical debt wholly a good model for approaching these kinds of um, problems or do we have to be cautious around it are, are, are there ways in which we can accidentally misuse it and misinterpret what it means or misread the signals do you think so I, I personally find that it's still a useful metaphor and um, I'm, I'm using it quite a lot uh, what I think is that uh, quite often we're misusing uh, technical depth to mean any bad code or any problem in general, right? That's not yeah. necessarily technical debt. So, I, I, but what I like about technical debt is this interest component. And this is something that we might not be discussing enough because to me, that's like the central part of it, right? You can have technical debt, but it's basically a free loan because you never work on that part again. Yeah. Or you can have technical debt in a hotspot, which is the equivalent of, I would say, an SMS loan or something, right? It's a ridiculous interest rate on that. Yeah. So I find it useful. And 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 so, uh, are, what are the traps then? So the, the traps are not to think in terms of the. In, uh, so I, I think if you, it always seems to me that if you if you do align the idea of technical debt with financial debt, that teaches you quite a lot. So sometimes financial debt's a good idea. And you know you can use it as a tool to do things that you couldn't otherwise afford to do. Um, other times, it's a terrible idea when you're, you know, paying off your gambling debts with your credit card or whatever else. You know, it's, you know, it's it's a bad situation to end end up in. And I see analogs for for, for all of those kinds of things in the in people talking about technical debt and using technical debt or suffering from technical debt in their in their code bases, but the. But in the conversations, I've, I've, I've had people say to me, you know, as a consultant, you know, don't, don't talk to the product owners about technical debt, they'll, they'll just turn off. Um, so so there's, there's something that's not landing as, with that as a model sometimes. And I just, just wondered whether you, you thought about that or you had any advice on how best to present these kinds of ideas your visualizations help i think but i just wondered whether there were you know there were any other ideas around technical debt that might um, um yeah uh, pay um, off and and sometimes it's just the scale because 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 like everything else in software that the, the scale at which these things can happen i think i might be quoting you back to yourself again I've got I've got in my notes here something about staying on top of four thousand years of technical debt. You know, it's it's really easy to imagine organisations that get into the equivalent of those sorts of situations if they don't act to manage their debt and control it. It seems. Yeah, and uh, I, I kind of think that there are. Uh, I mean, technical debt. I, I kind of like I said, I like the metaphor, but I think mm. that terminology might be a little bit tricky. So I think a couple of things happen. Uh, the first is that it contains the word technical, which immediately signals that this is something we should care about engineers, right? Let's push this down to an engineering department. And I, I don't think that's good. I don't think it's good enough by any means because uh, technical debt is a, is a business problem, right? If you if you have it, then you need to care about it. Yeah. And my experience is I, I'm fortunate. I get to meet a lot of C-level executives and most of them are aware of technical debt, right? So that the awareness is there. They're aware of the consequences. However, the big problem is that we have somehow gotten comfortable uh, to just accept that we might have technical debt. We don't know at what level. We don't know where it is. We just live with it. And I think yes. that's the, the thing I would like to change because uh, I think as a business ex executive, you should know exactly what level of technical debt you have. You should know where you have it because it's going to constrain what you can do as a company with your product. So I think that's uh, part of the problem. The other is that... Um, uh, we have, like I said, been misusing it, right? So in the same 
sense that we're as a community might misuse a term like refactoring right to mean changing code in general uh, which yeah. is isn't right? it's a, quite a structured process so i think it's a little bit the same thing with technical debt we you know maybe we implemented some uh, crappy solution now we call it technical debt and we want to fix it and maybe this maybe it isn't right but technical debt like you said to me it's also a tool i'm, I'm not religious about code quality by by any uh, means, right? So I occasionally myself uh, write code that I'm not super proud of. And the reason I do this is because I have uh, the additional benefit of context, right? So I know that this is a code in the long tail, right? This is code that's very far from a hotspot, right? And maybe yeah. I need to fix a bug there, right? So I, I do that fix and I might squeeze it in. I might add to the complexity. I put in those extra if statements, right? Because it's a safe bet that I will never have to look at that code again.